Welcome to Roadmap to Residency. Hello everyone, I'm Abhiraj. In this video, we will be discussing about acid-based disorders. So a 70-year-old woman with a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease presents to the emergency department with worsening shortness of breath and confusion. ABC analysis reveals a pH of 7.28, PaCO2 of 60, and bicarbonate of 30. Which of the following best describes the acid-based disturbance seen in this patient? Respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis. We will return back to this question, but let's first discuss some theory part of the acid-based balance. So the first one is the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now, this is the most important equation that you need to know able to understand the acid-based problems. So the pH is equal to the 6.1 plus log and that is the bicarbonate divided by 0 0.03 into PCO2. So bicarbonate is maintained by kidneys and PCO2 is maintained by lungs. So if you remove this constant, you can find that pH is directly proportional to bicarbonate and inversely proportional to PCO2. So if bicarbonate increases, the, P the pH will increase. If PCO2 will increase, the pH will decrease and it will go into acidosis. The arterial blood gas, the, the, normal, the normal bicarbonate is 22 to 26, okay? So for difference, we will take a value of 24. So the normal PCO2 is 35 to 45. For difference, we take 40. And the normal pH is 7.37 to 7.42. So the acid-based problems. So first, we need to check the pH. If the pH is less than 7.37, then that means it is acidosis. And if it is more than 7.42, it is alkalosis. Somewhere, you might... Uh, see that there is written 7.35 to 7.45 there is also somewhat right so we, then after that we need to check the bicarbonate and the pcu2 level whether it is increased or decreased so if the bicarbonate the, the normal is 22 to 28 the pcu2 that is from the abc the non, non, non the normal is 35 to 45 so we know what is the disorder if the bicarbonate is increased or decreased if the pcu2 is increased or decreased after that we need to to determine the acid-based disorder. If there is acidosis, plus there is decrease in the bicarbonate level, it means that it is metabolic acidosis. So acid acidosis due to any metabolic cause. If the, it is acidosis plus increased PCO2, it means that it is respiratory acidosis. Also, if it is alkalosis plus increased bicarbonate, it means it is metabolic alkalosis. Alkalosis plus decrease in the PCO2, it is respiratory alkalosis. So the pH, again, uh, we need to remember this by heart. pH directly proportional to bicarbonate, inversely proportional to PCO2. After that, we need to calculate the anion gap, which will, which is only needed if it is a metabolic acidosis, because we need to know the cause. Okay. After that, we use a special formulas to check for mixed disorder. Okay. So, for example, combined respiratory metabolic disorder, or if there are any two other metabolic disorders like metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis occurring at the same time. So the compensatory changes, so bicarbonate and CO2 are not independent. If there is abnormal bicarbonate, then there will be abnormal CO2. If there is abnormal CO2, then there will be abnormal bicarbonate. Then this is called as compensation. So in case of metabolic acidosis, where there is decrease in the bicarbonate, the body tries to compensate. For example, if there is metabolic acidosis, there is decrease in the bicarbonate, bicarbonate, the body will try to compensate by decreasing in the CO2 level also, okay? That's how the ratio will become again normal and the pH will be stabilized. Again, if there's metabolic alkalosis, there is increase in the bicarbonate, the body will try to also increase the PCO2 level. Similarly, if there is respiratory acidosis, if there is increase in the PCO2 level, the body will try to also increase the bicarbonate level if there is decrease in the co2 level the body will also try to decrease the bicarbonate level now these are the compensatory changes that are that generally occur in case of different acid based disorders so compensatory changes so simple disorders so culprit and compensatory changes they all go in the same direction in case of simple disorders so bicarbonate and pco2 both increase or both decrease for example if you can see in this problem so if the pH is 7.3 that means it is acidosis and then the bicarbonate is also low it means that it is metabolic acidosis then we go for the pcu2 then if it's pcu2 is also low then it means that it is metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation now, this is a simple disorder where both of the changes in the bicarbonate and PCO2 go in the same direction. That is, if one is decreasing, other will also decrease. If one is increasing, other will also increase. This occurs in case of simple disorders. So in case of respiratory compensation, 
So hyperventilation or hypoventilation will occur. It will alter the CO2 level and it will compensate for metabolic disorders in case of bicarbonate disorders. Hyperventilation it is physiological response to metabolic acidosis. Deep labored breathing will occur and it will try to blow off the CO2 because there is, there is decrease in the bicarbonate. So you need to decrease the, uh, the CO2 level. So that's why it will try to blow off the CO2. So compensation time frame is what? So the respiratory compensation uh, to metabolic disorders, if there is any metabolic acidosis, then the respiratory compensation to that will occur in minute. But the metabolic compensation to respiratory disorder, so the acute mild compensation will, will be occurring in minutes from the buffers, different buffers. But the real or the significant compensation will occur in days from kidneys. It may take, it may take beyond 72 hours for the significant compensation from the kidneys to occur. For example, in case of respiratory acidosis, if there is PCO2 that is increasing, then the body will try to increase the bicarbonate then the significant increase in the bicarbonate will be occurring from the kidneys, but it will, it will take days to occur. So here we can see acidosis, if it is respiratory, the compensation will be increased in the CO3. Okay. If it is metabolic, the compensation will be decreased in the CO2. If it is alkalosis, the compensation will be, the respiratory alkalosis compensation will be from the decrease in the CO3. And metabolic uh, alkalosis, the compensation will be to increase the CO2. Now let's see what the first state says. So acid-based physiology, so metabolic acidosis, that there will be decrease in the pH, decrease in the PCO2, which is the compensation, and this is the decrease in the bicarbonate, which is the primary mechanism. And everything else we have discussed in our uh, previous slides. So let's not uh, go in detail. But the predicted respiratory compensation for a simple metabolic acidosis can be calculated using the Winters formula. Now, what is Winters, Winters formula? So if the measured PCO2 is more than the predicted PCO2, then it is concomitant respiratory acidosis. Okay. So what is predicted PCO2? So, so predicted PCO2 means that there is the simple compensation that will occur. For example, in case of metabolic acidosis, there will be some predicted PCO2 that for example if HCO3 is decreasing there will be some decrease in the PCO2 okay now that means that it, it is the predicted PCO2 level but by somehow if we calculate the PCO2 level okay if we calculate the PCO2 level and it occurs to be more than our predicted PCO2 level then it means that there is somewhere PCO2 level increasing which means that there is somewhere concomitant respiratory acidosis is also occurring okay and that is uh, that will lead us to the mixed acid base disorder. So this is the again flow chart from your first state. So to check the arterial pH. If it is less than seven point three five, it is acidemia. If it's if the PCO two is more than forty four, it is respiratory acidosis, and it may be due to hypoventilation due to these causes. If it is metabolic acidosis where the bicarbonate level is less than twenty, we need to check the anion gap. If the anion gap is is more than two L, then uh, uh, then it means that it is. Uh, increase anion gap metabolic acidosis due to these causes and if it is normal it means that it is increased it is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis due to these uh, uh, causes now it is very very important very 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 important to memorize these different causes of acidosis and alkalosis as these are very frequently asked in the, in the examination or will be associated directly or indirectly to the question also, in case of alkalemia, if the pH is 7.45 or more, then we can say that uh, if the PCO2 is less than 36, then it will be respiratory alkalosis. And if the bicarbonate is 28, it will be metabolic alkalosis. But if it is metabolic alkalosis, we need to also check the, 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 the urine chloride level. If the urine chloride level is more than 20, it means that it is saline resistant. Okay, uh, saline resistant causes like hyperaldosteronism, Barton syndrome, Gittelman syndrome. If it is less than 20, uh, it, then it may be saline responsive. It may be due to vomiting, recent leukothiazide diuretics or antacids. So respiratory alkalosis, pH more than 7.42 or more than 7.45, and there is decrease in the PCO2. So the increased pH, the formula is 6.1 plus log, so bicarbonate will decrease. So this decrease will be due to the compensation and the primary abnormality is decreased in the PCO2. So respiratory alkalosis, alkalosis because there is decrease in the PCO2 and bicarbonate is decreasing due to the compensation. Now, the most common cause that they, they, that they will ask you about the respiratory alkalosis is the aspirin overdose. 
Now, shortly after ingestion of the aspirin or aspirin, there will be respiratory alkalosis because it stimulates the medulla and there will be hyperventilation. But if there is hours after ingestion, then it will cause anion gap, anion gap metabolic acidosis. Anion gap metabolic acidosis, it means that it is not normal. Okay, so anion gap metabolic acidosis, salicylates will decrease the lipolysis and there, it, also, it will also inhibit the citric acid cycle. And there will be in, there will be accumulation of different sort of pyruvate, lactate, and keto acids. So then it will cause acidosis. So initially it will be respiratory alkalosis, and later it will it will change to metabolic acidosis. So respiratory acidosis, impaired gas exchange. So uh, due to the pneumonia, pulmonary edema, acute respiratory distress syndrome or COPD. So airway obstruction in case of aspiration or obstructive sleep apnea. So here, here was our question. So respiratory acidosis, the arterial blood gas analysis findings of a PS of 7.28 and elevated PCO2 of 60 indicate respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis occurs when there is inadequate ventilation leading to a retention of CO2 in the blood, resulting in an increased PCO2 and a decrease in the pH. So in this patient with COPD, the worsening shortness of breath um, suggests impaired gas exchange, which leads to the decreased elimination of CO2 from the lungs. As a result, PSCO2 level will rise, causing respiratory acidosis. The elevated level in the, in the bicarbonate is generally due to the compensatory mechanism. Thank you for watching.